Welcome back to the cottage. Today we are canning beef. Um, we're going to cut this into one inch cubes. We're going to be using half pint jars. Uh, you're going to need to have clean rims, clean jars, and of course a pressure can for this. You cannot use a boiling water can or canned meat. It just is not going to work. So do this in quart sized jars depending on the size of your family and how much meat you like to use but we are gonna go with the half pipe method today. So on standby, go ahead and start boiling your water so that you can get it, have it ready to go when you are ready to start canning. Now that the beef is cut up in one inch chunks, you need, this is where you get your jars, in this case we're using pint, I'll lay the funnel, go on top, make sure everything falls in. Then you just start filling the jar up, almost to the top. You don't want to pack it in there, you just want it loosely in. Kind of like that. Then you put the half teaspoon of salt, some pepper, and if you want onion powder, garlic powder, any, any other seasoning you want to use. Then you fill it up with water up to about the lines. About an inch headspace. About like that. We go back, we fill it up to about a one inch, we have a one inch head space. That way, when the while it's processing, then the meat will have juice in it and it will finish filling it all the way up. Then you go around the side with a plastic or a wooden spoon handle to get all the air bubbles out of it. Then you take your lid down, not, the new ones like these, you don't have, you wipe, wipe it clean, you don't have to heat these up in water. You put it on there, put the ring set on there. And then you use the handle to grab it and put it in the can, in the canner. I get the water in the canner hot. And right before I start canning, I turn it off to allow it, so it doesn't allow the jar to heat too much and, and pop and break while it's in the canning process. And we keep doing this until we get nine jars, because my, my canner holds nine jars, nine pints that is. Uh, in the, in the, in the, to keep it more cooking and then we can it for an hour and 15 minutes for the pints. When canning this at our altitude, which we're almost at sea level, a little bit above sea level, we use 10 pounds uh, on, the, on a canner for basically everything we can. On things higher than, like towards the mountain area, they, the altitude's higher, so you need more pressure in the canner, so they usually use 15 pounds. 
but I recommend checking for your area where you're located at what is proper weight for pressure. 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 5 pounds, it varies. We have the kettle full now. We got the, the, the stove on high to the heat up. When it gets hot enough, you start building up pressure. You'll start hearing this fizzing, then the vent, and it'll pop up, which means it's got pressure, it's complete pressure. When it gets starts getting 10 pounds, this will start jiggling. And when, you, when it starts jiggling, you, you turn down the heat a little bit and turn your timer on for an hour and 15 minutes for the pints, an hour and a half for the quarts. At, my level of uh, altitude in where we live at and from there we have let it set some weight okay now the timer's gone off you, you wait an hour and a half and you keep still jiggling turn your heat off you turn the timer off and you can either let it sit here on the heat like this and let it depressurize by itself which will take longer that way i like removing it from the stove then it's off the heat, and now it'll depressurize a lot faster because there's no, no extra heat at the bottom of it. It's moving the heat completely. What you're waiting for now, as you can see, now it's dying down. It's not jiggling as much, it ain't hissing as much. When this pops back down, let's let, let, let you know the pressure is released and safe to remove the lid. Do not remove the lid until that goes down. Now we're laying the towels down on the counter for a, to give a one to protect the table from getting burn marks from the hot jars, and two protect the jars from the wood being cold. It keeps them from cracking faster, or keeps them from cracking and busting. So now my can. is done, let's do this, this. As you can see, the top-up thing is pop is down. I move the weight, nothing happens, which is a good thing. Undo the lid, now this is where you gotta be careful, otherwise you'll get burned by the steam. I gently take the lid off, little by little, with the steam out. The steam burns too, and it'll leave a burn mark. And we don't want it to get burnt. So, first, we take it off. And I put mine in the sink just for, until I get done uncanning to removing the jars. Now, it comes out. Oh, yes. Lovely jars of canned beef. Now, you can use this beef. And stews, if you want. Stir fry. Uh, stir fry, which we had earlier today. Uh, Did you say stew or soup? Stew, soups. Basically anything you want. Or stir it out of the jar. Or you can stir it out of the jar. You could even take the broth and make a good gravy, thicken it up with a good roux, and just serve it with heat up your meat. He uh, make some mashed potatoes and some green beans and pour that gravy over your potatoes. It would be fantastic. You're good to go. And it's super, super tender. It just melts in your mouth. Right now we have two, four, six, eight. Nine lovely jars of canned beef. Don't forget the label. Thank you so much for joining us on another canning adventure. We will see you, see you next time at the cottage.
Canning can beef. Canning beef. <laughs> Sorry. The water. The raw, raw pack. Raw pack, canning beef, take one. 